This right here is a gold mine, and it's a gold mine in which I have reused this potting soil for probably 10 years now, which sounds crazy, but it most definitely works. Whether it's vegetables, flowers, you name it, this is repurposed. The only thing I will not use reused potting soil for is seed starting and bumping up of seedlings into larger pots. That is fresh soil only. And that is the only soil I buy because this this stuff I just reuse until the ends of the earth. It's gonna be it's gonna be with me for my whole life, probably longer than my husband will. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I do to reuse my potting soil. But number one is the obvious. It is actually emptying all your pots. Now, the process of emptying the pots is kind of multifaceted in the sense that you need to be able to get into the pot to break up root clumps, soil clumps, and any odd stems, tubers, you name it, that may have made a home inside of that potting soil from the year before. So, Dumping it out into some sort of a container, it really doesn't matter what, that's slightly bigger, that allows you to manipulate it is best. If you have to, you can always just manipulate it within the container, always removing root clumps, stems, and all, everything else like that. So this kiddie pool has been with me for equally as long as my potting soil has. That is why it is kind of a light blue rather than the blue it was or two, it is much easier to mix in the products that you see here when you have something shallow and wide because it gives you a really good view of exactly what's going on. So imagine if I was to put this into a garbage can, for example, I need to be able to reach my arms all the way to the bottom of the garbage can and really mix it thoroughly, or I can only do small sections at a time. So that is why I use my kiddie pool. Okay, so here are some things that you definitely want to either remove or break up. Now, number one, again, is root clumps, leaves, anything odd like this where it's literally, I can't break it into pieces. This, it ends up in the compost. Any sort of sticks, twigs, odd things that may have landed in there or been inherited, these can also go in the compost. They just don't serve a purpose. They don't help with moisture holding capacity. They don't help with nutrients. They actually hamper the results. So that also goes in the compost pile. Little wannabe soil aggregates, and I say that because this is soilless medium, needs to be broken up the same as you would break up your actual soil in your garden. And I will show you guys how to go about planting seeds and transplants with soil soil, if you will. But this one follows the exact same rule and we need to break it up into smaller, little, very tiny bite-sized pieces. So the next thing you wanna look at is actually the perlite itself. Now, I haven't had this happen too many times, but this is starting to look a little bit too dense compared to what I normally do enjoy. And that is because I do use organics and peat moss to kind of top things up over time. And so what I will add is actually perlite and this you can just buy it in bags you can get bigger bags than this and you just add it to your soil accordingly if you have a potting soil or a pot that's in a space that's incredibly sunny or you have a pot that's incredibly small one thing you may want to consider is actually skipping the addition of more perlite and just going with the organics, which will help with water holding capacity, meaning you don't have to water as much. The additions of organic, it's a preference to be honest, the only organics I actually add to my potting soil is peat moss. So I will just buy Premier Peat or Sunshine Mix Peat with no fertilizers, no perlite, no compost, no manures, just to top things up. Now, if you did not know, peat can come in different fiber lengths. You can get short fibers, you can get long fibers. Now, the stuff you get in the bales typically is a longer fiber. The stuff you get in seed starting mixes is actually a smaller fiber. Smaller fibers mean higher density, more water holding capacity, and if you're reusing potting soil, it's normal for the fibers to break down and get smaller. So to be able to increase the air without maybe necessarily adding perlite, you could add peat, which is a larger fibered form of peat moss that will help top things up. Now you can add manures and you can add compost, but what I will say is that it 
doesn't necessarily mean it's going to fertilize your plants. Living soil or not, it may have absolute zero actual use. The use of synthetic fertilizers actually can hugely benefit microbes, for example, because it supplies them with nitrogen, which actually helps them break things down. So I actually wouldn't be concerned with the destruction of microbes that are inside of your potting soils. Keep in mind that potting soils are notorious for having very low microbe activity. Mineral soil has a higher surface area and this higher surface area translates into more spaces in which microbes can inhabit. You combine this with a few other chemical and physical factors and actual mineral soil wins out when it comes to microbial activity. Potting soil tends to be lackluster in actual microbe activity and this is why I don't encourage using compost and manure as a fertilizer source in a soilless medium but I can encourage it as just a top up for organics to actually build up the bulk of the product you're working with. Another reason why microbes actually don't do well in a soilless medium comes down to the fact that potting soils classically are in containers and these containers can get incredibly warm. And there are a number of different microbes out there, extremophiles being removed from the mix that don't actually enjoy these higher temps and it will kill them off or at a minimum hamper their ability to reproduce. Get jiggy with it if you will. The other thing is that potting soil can and likely will dry out. Every time things dry out, microbes tend to pass away. So if you watch my video here on microbes and why water and chemistry and physicality of your soil is so important, you already know the answer to why lack of water in potting soil is a no-go when it comes to microbe activity. I'm so confident in how safe synthetic fertilizers are that I'm willing to eat it. You, if you want to relive your childhood, get this. And don't mix it in water, just eat it straight because me and Robin have eaten half a bag. I don't know how we're gonna sleep tonight. It's very good. I'm fertilizing myself at this point. Okay, all joking aside, you do actually wanna use synthetics if you wanna get the best results and not everyone's gonna agree with this. Honest to goodness, do what you want. Be your own garden scientist. If you like the idea of using synthetic fertilizers, then do it. If you aren't comfortable with it, then go for organic. As a soil science person, I am inherently biased towards synthetics being harmless because I already know that a nutrient is a nutrient and there's only certain forms that plants can uptake of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and all the micronutrients. And they need to be broken down and bonded together in order for the plants to uptake them through either their active or their passive root. So that means organics and synthetics end up in the same form at the end of the day. Now, I actually don't use liquid when it comes to my containers. I do actually use the granular dissolved in water to fertilize my hanging baskets because they're so much smaller, they're more likely to, to dry out and drying out can actually cause burning of the roots, which in turn will cause the plant to look like it's burnt. So I do use liquid fertilizers in smaller containers that I know I'm not gonna be able to keep up with when it comes to watering. If I'm not worried about it drying out and I know I can keep up, I just wanna actually go with a granular mix and I just use all-purpose miracle Grow, and it's what I've used for my entire life because I my grandma used it, so that's what I use. I don't use a bloom formula, I don't use a flower formula. I experiment every once in a while, but all the time I go back to miracle Grow all purpose. You can address the hate mail to the email that's linked in my YouTube. And I always shied away for years from saying that I use synthetics because I didn't wanna be the new garden YouTuber that uh, used synthetic, you know, shamed by the internet, but your girl don't care anymore. I use synthetics and I'm proud of it. When it comes to reusing potting soil, literally the sky is the limit. I, like I said, have been reusing potting soil for 10 plus years. Ever since I moved into this house, I've reused potting soil. I know my grandma and my mom 
had reused their potting soil for endless amount of years, probably since I was born. I've really never seen them purchase bags upon bags to redo all their pots. And my mother-in-law, when I told her I was actually doing this video, she said, oh yeah, I've used the same potting soil for nine years now, and all she adds is a granular fertilizer. That can make a big difference on your budget when it comes to gardening and actually helping you accumulate more pots, more soil, which means more growing power over time. If you wanna know why you shouldn't reuse potting soil in your hanging baskets, then this is the actual video you wanna check out. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. People will believe that I actually was using blue Kool-Aid because if I don't film this, they'll be like, yeah, that idiot, that idiot. <laughs> it's like, what are those called? Uh, beer? Two girls, one bag. <laughs> no, what is that called? That oh, uh, a funnel. Yeah, like a beer funnel. Brewskis. <laughs> I mean, it's good. <laughs> My hair's white. It looks like I did cocaine. Oh, okay. Kool Aid mixed up. Trust me, it's gonna be funny when I do it. Oh, you got a plan? Oh, fuck. Confirmed and fart. Equal to microbe sourcing. Oh, shit. Oh, no, that'll be okay. That's my.